Hi, this is ET370, Lecture 6, and or actually 6A. This is going to be a three-part lecture. So in the first part, we'll talk about H-bridge, uh, the H-bridge circuit and flyback diodes. Then we'll talk about uh, this concept called buck and boost converters, which can step up and step down DC voltage. And last, we'll go over this uh, jewel fuse circuit. It's kind of a fun circuit to uh, automatically boost up a voltage. But uh, first, we're going to talk about H bridges. And so to, to motivate it, we're going to uh, look at how do you control a motor? And specifically, how do you get it to change direction? And I have a little DC, a brushed DC motor. And if I apply DC voltage and current, what I can do is I can get this motor to spin. So if I take this and I turn this on, you can see that it spins. And let's see, can we see which way it spins? kind of spinning uh, counterclockwise, okay? And if I flip the voltage, so I'm gonna flip the terminals here, and uh, you can see it flips the direction. So you can see that it goes uh, clockwise now. Um, but that's kind of annoying because I have to literally go in and flip, mechanically flip the terminals. And uh, that's not something that we uh, want our microcontroller ha having to do is flip this, right? And uh, is there a circuit such that if we send different input signals, could it automatically flip it? And can we use our whole transistor idea and a, a nice combination of switches, because transistors are kind of behaving like controlled switches, to do this automatic flipping instead of having to manually go back and forth, okay? All right, so let's explore this H bridge. And this is exactly the circuit that allows us to do this flipping. So um, let's begin here. Um, as I already showed, if I apply current in two different, different directions, we can get the motor to spin in different directions. And uh, if we assume a constant fixed polarity voltage source, this, as we said, is a problem. And so here's the really nice, convenient H bridge circuit. I, I think you can see that's an H here, right? So you get the letter H. Um, notice I have ground here and I have high here, right? Maybe we can even put in a ground. Okay, and so you have your voltage source. So this is like your battery, your fixed voltage. And notice there's four switches, one, two, three, four, okay? And uh, we put our motor in the middle. So those are our two terminals of our motor. And you could imagine that if I were to close switches one and two, you could follow the path and see that current flows from the voltage source down through switch one through the motor from left to right and goes down switch two. Okay, let's say, assume that that's clockwise rotation, right? It all depends on, you know, how everything's wound, but um, let's just say it's clockwise. Now, if I wanted to get the current to go the other way from right to left, I could open up switch one and two and close switch three and four here. And you can see that here. So closing switch three and four takes that same <coughs> polarity of voltage here and, and uh, uh, directs it from the right to the left this time. So notice in the motor, that the current direction changed. However, the voltage source polarity stayed the same. Okay, so how would we do this without mechanical switches? Well, we can use the transistors that we learned before. Um, and how would we make the motor spin faster and slower? Well, we could use PWM. <coughs> so these are nice tools that we've kind of learned already, and they can be applied to this more complicated H-bridge circuit. Okay. So how could we implement this in practice? Well, we could do this. We could take, excuse me here, um, an NPN and a PNP and put some NPN transistors on the bottom and PNP transistors on the top. And I'll have some base current limiting resistors here. And imagine these two voltages, A and B, are coming from a microcontroller, right? So I could make this high or low or pulse width modulated, right? I have my ground and my voltage source here. And let's just walk through the different states. So let's say we're given, I have a table of A, B, so voltage is A and B, okay? And then I have, um, I have the transistors here, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Notice Q1 is controlled by, in this case, A, and Q2 is controlled by B. Q3 is controlled by B as well, and Q4 is controlled by A. And look at, the, I have L and R listed as the left and right voltages of the motor, okay? And I'll, I'll also list the motor behavior. So let's kind of walk through what happens here. If I have zero volts and zero volts here, okay? Well, what happens to the NPN? 
let's look at this Q4. The NPNs on both sides should turn off, right? Because no current is allowed to go into this base, right? So these are off and off. So if I look at Q4, it's in cutoff and Q2 is in cutoff, right? Now, what about Q1 and Q3? Can you see if this is a low voltage current would actually leave uh, this base and flow down into the Arduino, just a little trickle current because you would limit it by that resistor. And you'd essentially turn these in an on condition. We could either call it forward active or saturation depending on um, the, the resistor choice, okay? Now what's going on here? These are zero, zero, these are off and these are closed essentially acting as shorts. So the motor is actually acting as a brake. It's as if you took the two leads and you connected, the, connected them together, right? So if I take my motor and I literally touch these two leads together, it actually acts as a brake. It uses Faraday's law and it resists. There's a, see, look at that. It's kind of a dampy kind of situation, right? Okay. So this is a brake behavior, okay? Well, what happens now if I send the B side high? So I go low here, high over here. Well, the A ones don't change, right? This still stays saturation cutoff. And the B transistors, so two and three here, which are controlled by the B transistor, they flip their states, right? So if this B is high, we can look at it. Q2 now turns on, so saturation, and Q3 now goes in cutoff. So this high, this goes to cutoff. Okay. And let's say it spins in a clockwise rotation. So the, the voltage on the left here is now high, right? Because this is on. And the voltage on the right goes to ground, right? Okay. Okay. So let's see if what happens if we switch over to high and low. So now this high and this is low. Well, what we should see is counterclockwise rotation, right? Or current going from uh, right to left, right? We have a high voltage here, low voltage here, but let's see from the transistor's perspective why that happens. Okay, so when the A side is high, the Q4 should turn on good, and when this is high, the Q1 should open. That's this one, cut off, good. Now what about over here? When this is low, when this is low, the Q2 should open, right? So good. And when this is low, the Q3 will be active, good. So that means Q3 and Q4, Q3 and Q4 are shorted, which means I have a high voltage on the right side and a low voltage here on the left side. And this is gonna cause the motor to spin the other way. Now, the last thing we have is high and high. What happens if we send both of these high? Well, if we send both of them high, you're gonna turn on both of the bottom transistors, Q2 and Q4, good, Q2 and Q4, and you're gonna turn off, you're gonna turn off the two PMPs, in fact, which is Q1 and Q3. And you can see that these are off, okay? And again, it'll act like a, a break because you're essentially shorting the two terminals together. Okay, so I hope this very simple uh, diagram shows kind of how a practical bipolar junction transistor implementation could work, all right? All right, the next thing I wanted to explore was flyback diodes, right? Now, if you remember from your last class, we talked about inductors. Well, a motor is kind of like an inductor. Inside a motor is a bunch of wires, all right? So what happens when we send current through an inductor? Well, imagine we have a switch. We close the, the, the switch. And when you try to open it again, you would get an arc, right? Because an inductor wants to maintain the current flow. Inductor does not like to have a change of state. Okay, so it's slow to spin up, slow to spin down in some sense, right? Now all this stuff happens at fast time constants, but that's the idea. Okay, and so what you could get is this, this arcing that, that occurs. Well, a solution to that is to use a flyback diode, right? Okay, so you have both mechanical and electrical inertia in the motor, right? That's essentially what inductor is. And you have the mechanical inertia just from literally the rotor spinning. So imagine I get current to flow, okay, I, want, I have current going down, and when I open it, current still wants to go down, but what we could do is we could put a diode, notice the diode cathode is facing towards the voltage supply, okay, so what's happening here, current's going down when I open the switch, when I open the switch, current's going to go down, and then it's going to flow in through the diode, bleed off until it dissipates and is gone, so that's kind of nice. Um, if you wanted to implement this on a H-bridge configuration, what you could do 
is put four diodes, one, two, three, four, in parallel with each of these transistors. Now notice, they are pointed such that the cathode is towards the voltage supply. If you were to flip these upside down, can you imagine this would be a very bad situation? And that's a bad situation because you would allow current to flow all the way down through the rails. That would be no good. And in fact, a lot of transistors, practical transistors, actually build in a diode into their transistor oriented like this. Okay, so sometimes you don't even need to put an external diode. It has one built in. Okay, so what will happen here is as you switch these on and off, pulse width modulate, when the current wants to flow, then if it, it'll actually activate the opposite diodes. And we'll see that in the simulation, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch over to the simulation here. We're gonna look at the simple NPN, PNP flyback diodes, uh, sorry, H-bridge with flyback diodes. And I'll actually uh, give you some foreshadowing because we'll be talking about MOSFETs in later lectures, but I wanna show you a more complicated implementation with MOSFETs. Okay, so let's switch over and look at uh, this H-bridge in action. Okay, so here we are. We have our H bridge. This is the one we just showed. NPN, PNP, everything's off and off. Okay, so zero volts on the A and B side. If it's zero volts on the A and B side, what does that mean? Zero volts on here means that these NPNs are uh, essentially uh, not active. Okay, now these PNP are active, right? So if I run this, a little bit of trickle current is going to be pulled out of the PNP through this base resistor. So these essentially you can think of as being shorted. So this is the breaking condition. Now, if I activate the B, let's think about what's going to happen. If I turn the B on, if I turn the B on, it's going to activate the bottom transistor here, but it's going to deactivate the top. So this is kind of like an inverted. These will always be opposite depending on uh, the voltage here, right? So right now, if this is low, the top is on and the bottom's off. If this is high, the top is off, the bottom's on. So let's do that. Okay, and you guys can see here that the NPN now turns on. Since this was already on, what we see is current flowing from left to right as predicted in that chart. Okay, now if I turn this off again, watch the diodes here because the current, no, no, notice we have a little inductor here. This is, we're pretending this is the motor, right? The inductance wants the current to keep going from left to right. But if I open this up, there's no path for it to go but through these diodes. So watch this, boom. And so it bleeds off the extra, uh, extra current through that flyback diode, which I'm representing as an LED, okay? I'll do that again. So current's going from left to right and then boom, okay? Let's do the other one. So now I'm getting current to go from right to left because I've activated this bottom NPN and deactivated this top PNP, okay? And if I release it, boom, okay? And I can get it going again. If I want to, I could actually activate the, uh, what do you call it, the right side and make both sides high in this case. And notice, right, this one activates, okay? So I could do the same thing here, get it go to go the other way, and then boom, this one activates, okay? So both when they're high and high or low and low on the inputs, uh, these would be breaking situations, but if I have one of them on like this, this is a running situation where it's either going to have current going from right to left or left to right. And then here we have a break. Now, a link to this simulation will be in the description, so you can play with this and just toggle through uh, these uh, two voltages. But NPNs on the bottom, PNPs on the top. Okay, so I'm going to pause that, and I also wanted to show you this kind of crazy version. Okay, so notice on here, even in this off condition, notice there's still a little bit of trickle current, right? Because these PNPs are sucking power, right? Okay, just a little bit, but maybe you don't want that. Maybe that's a little bit inefficient. So we could go over here and drive it like this. And I know we haven't talked about MOSFETs yet, but MOSFETs are voltage controlled transistors, okay? And what I have here on the bottom is an NMOS and PMOS. So instead of uh, input current, it's input voltage that'll turn on an NMOS and same with the PMOS. And they're kind of reverse logic. A high voltage here turns on an NMOS and a high voltage here turns off a PMOS. Whereas a low voltage here will turn on a PMOS and a low voltage here will turn, on, turn off an NMOS. Okay, so they're running kind of the same as an NPN, PNP, but it's voltage controlled instead of current controlled. 
Okay, so what's going on here? I'm now, uh, I have a kind of a different topology. What's going on? I have the A and B inputs. So these are like coming from an Arduino, but notice the connection here. I have a diagonal connection from my A side to its diagonal opposite here. So notice this one, low voltage, low voltage. This NMOS is off, okay, that's fine. Same with over here, low voltage, cross-connected, low voltage. This NMOS over here on the lower left is also off. Okay, what about this one? Look at this tricky little helper NPN. If I have a low voltage or no current, this NPN transistor, which is acting like a switch, is also off, which means that with this pull-up resistor, this is an open circuit. This voltage actually being pulled up to 15 volts, which is turning off the P at PMOS here, okay? All right, so uh, what's going on here? If I turn one on, let's see, look at this. If I turn this on, it essentially activates the diagonals, right? And on here, turns on the opposite NMOS and its corresponding PMOS, right? So this activates on and what's going on here? If I turn on this N NPN, current is now allowed to flow, okay, a little bit. This voltage is pulled low actually, right? So this voltage here is pulled low. If this voltage is pulled low, this PMOS actually turns on, okay? And we're getting current going from left to right. And I can do the same thing, I'm gonna turn that back off. And notice when I turn that back off, look at the flyback diodes. Watch that the current wants to go left to right. So the flyback diodes take on, look, perfect. They take on that extra path, good. And now let's go to this side, okay? Now the current wants to go from right to left. Notice how this cross connection is allowing these diagonals, uh, diagonal transistors to turn on. You can see the flow and watch the flyback diodes as I turn it on, good. Now I have a little note here. In practice, do not drive both logic inputs high. Let's see why. I mean, simulation, so we're not gonna break anything physically, but let's see why. I'm gonna turn it on. Current's gonna flow, yay. But if I turn this one on, I've essentially activated all four transistors at the same time. This is no good because now voltage, this uh, current from this voltage source is now shorting down through both transistor walls. No good, so in this implementation, this would be not a safe thing to activate both of them high. So you could either do low, low, one, zero, zero, one, but not one, one on these inputs. Okay, again, the link to this is in the description. You will build this in lab. Um, so this is a fun one, um, but uh, yeah, I hope you learned a lot and I uh, hope this was a nice intro to H-Bridges. Okay, I'll see you at the next one.